Hi guys, so I'm just gonna chit chat with you while I get myself ready. I just felt like coming on and talking about prayer. What do you guys think about when you hear the word prayer? Is it like some experience or not experience? Is it like something that you dread or something you don't look forward to? The reason I'm asking is because the verse of the day for my new version app was coming from it never fails every time I wear white I get makeup on me and that's what I have right here and I don't know that it's going to come out fortunately this can cover it but I don't know how I did that um, how I did that I was trying to be very cautious and putting on my makeup, but anyway, the, the, the day's scripture on my version Bible out was coming from 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. I believe that's the exact verse. Uh, pray without ceasing. Some of your versions may say, pray continually, pray always, pray all the time. Basically, pray. So, when I thought about that, I said, so basically, and I made this an Instagram post as well, because, you know, I know sometimes a lot of people think of pray, and you just think I uh, probably made it because of traditions of how it was presented to us in church or just from older people in general um, we kind of drew the idea that it was something that you know maybe we had to go into our prayer closet to do you know and so we kind of viewed it as like a task. <laughs> yeah, that happened. I don't know why I was trying to wipe my hands on the towel <laughs> that I have my phone propped up on. But you know me, I'm always doing some silly stuff. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, you know, we kind of drew a perception of prayer carried down from traditions. Going into your prayer closet, you know, just setting aside a time to pray. And that's good. I'm not trying to say don't do that. But. What I do want to say to help someone out, because it certainly helped me once I come into a relationship with God, that, you know, basically prayer is just us talking to God. Like I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> I can talk to God. And as a matter of fact, he hears me right now, but he wants us to directly communicate to him like I'm communicating with you guys right now. And so when you just normally talk to people, you're not like planning out, okay, so what am I going to say to her? What am I going to say to him? You know, it's just going to come naturally. I wonder why that is. 
because you're in a relationship with that person. And so it comes naturally. So I see my husband. Hey, baby, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing good. And it's okay to say, God, how are you today? Even though God is always good. But this is just opening up and expressing and just talking. However you need to come into a conversation with the Lord is however you need to do that. It's not going to look the way my conversation looks. Our sister Jean, our brother Thomas, you know. So I know also traditionally in church, we would... um you start deeming other people's prayers as, oh, now she prayed to that girl. You prayed. Mm-hmm. He, he showed it pretty. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> so with that mindset, you're like thinking, well, I can't pray like that. And so you don't pray. And I know, you know, at my church, they used to like, we used to have different, like it would be a youth Sunday and you used to have uh, different stuff that they assigned different people to do. Someone did the responsive reading, someone did the scripture, the, you know, all that, all that extra stuff. That's just not necessary. But um, so when it came time for someone to pray, everyone was always wanting to do the other things rather than pray. And so they would just start ram randomly picking people to pray. And you'd be like so scared that they don't pick you because you felt like, oh my gosh, my prayers is going to suck. Are people going to be laughing? And we drew the so totally the wrong focus on prayer. Now, no, I'm not the only one that has experienced that. Um, and so with that, we brought it, carried it over into our adult life to some extent because, you know, what you are affected by as you are growing up kind of sticks with you unless you, you know, come to grips with it and deal with it and figure out, okay, this is how I used to be. So how do I need to be now? Or otherwise you just continue to take that, carry that lifestyle with you unless you grow with it. Um, and so in saying that, you know, we just viewed prayer as another task. Uh, uh, you know, okay, y'all need to read your Bible. We got to read my Bible. I got to pray. You know, you just viewed it as some other task instead of just you opening up and talking to God. And so, because you just need to start talking to him, he just wants your sincere heart. He does not want a prayer that you've got to think of, uh, make up, or sound like anyone else. Matter of fact, he in the word, he says, don't be like, I think it is maybe the Pharisees, the Sadducees. I think he's directly pointing them out or just people in general that just say the same repetitive, you know, repetitive prayers. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard some of the same repetitive prayers in my tradition of going to church. You know, it was the, well, I could, I could almost recite it, I could almost recite it. And I'm not trying to put anyone on blast about how they prayed back then, whatever. What I am trying to do is offer some hope to some of you today that yet struggle with it. Shoot, I still struggle with it, but I had to come to another realization this morning, uh, which was... Just don't forfeit praying, saying something. So a lot of times, you know, it can it it's easy to, to start opening up and praying because you can think of things that you need or what you need to pray to God about. Someone's sick, you're going to do that. Uh, you need something, you're going to pray about that. But then there's those days sometimes when there's nothing just heavy on your heart to pray about, per se. Don't forfeit that opportunity to say something even still because you want to just get 
in a habit of daily communicating with the Lord. So I said this morning, even if I don't pray anything extra other than the Lord's prayer, at least make that effort to open up and communicate to God. Because once that communication is open, that pathway has been made open, you allow an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to speak to you in that moment because you are directly communicating with God. And so uh, on my Bible app, I already put blush on what I'm doing. On my Bible app, uh, And this ain't no makeup tutorial. It's just me doing my face the way Karen does her face. Whatever works for me. Uh, also on my Bible app, it has a uh, segment. Well, yeah. It has a segment there that's saying, set a time, set aside time to pray. So I have that sent as a notification and it's just a reminder. So could say, girl, why do you need a reminder to pray? Just, you know, because in this life of our daily lives and what we go through, it's easy to get caught up with the day's events and then just miss that time to pray. Uh, so that's why I need, that's why Karen needs a daily reminder, you know, and sometimes it'll come across and I'll be able to, you know, pray something immediately. And then sometimes it'll come across and I'll just know, I'll keep that notification up. I won't swipe it away, but just to continue to remind me, okay, you know, pray, pray today. So, I see y'all made it back. All right, that's my, um, hi, Eddie. Say hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. You look like you gained a couple of pounds. You look so cute. You got a potty? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so that's Adeline. They've been on their spring break, so Karen's been having a break, and Karen's been enjoying it because Karen's been sleeping in. I've been doing a lot of sleeping, y'all, and I've been enjoying every bit of it. And no, I'm not upset that I've been sleeping a lot because it's a much needed rest. Because when I'm do when I am watching them, I don't get as much sleep as I'm sure you probably all know. But back to Grandma, you have no shoes. I know, I see. That's pretty. You look so pretty. Okay, tell them I'm getting ready. Oh, be careful. Tell them I'm getting ready. I didn't finish my face. Um, I guess that's good enough. I don't know. Um, I don't know where I was at, what I was saying. Oh, yeah, to just set the notification and then to pray. And so I just want to say just you opening up and just begin to talk to the Lord it's it's like it's just going to come natural to to just you know you start opening up and talking to him and once you start doing that you know things you, you you do you can pray anywhere but it is crucial sometimes to get away alone just like if i was like just in here now talking to god uh which is my interaction to him in through prayer. Uh, and then Adeline came in. So I would have that distraction there. But that doesn't mean that God didn't hear me prior to her coming when I was talking to him. And that doesn't mean that once she came and left, that the communication was broken. No, I could still go back and continue talking to the Father because we have to remember more so than anything else that he just wants relationship with us. He just wants us to talk to him. And then he talks to us. Sometimes we can pray and we don't hear nothing. But that doesn't mean we should never 
believe, to, so get this thought out of your head. Never believe that God does not hear. Because first of all, we have to understand that God hears everything. Okay? So whether we are directly praying to him or not, he's hearing everything anyway. But the difference in prayer is we are making a specific requ request and our supplications known to him. And so he that allows him, he already has his ear directed to hear us, but now it's like you've called on him, you've beckoned him, you've summoned him for a specific request and he hears it. Uh, but again, he hears everything I'm saying right now. So what I was saying with like, not necessarily having to just get away in the closet to pray or go in your car or somewhere, you can talk to God and know that God still hears you when you're not doing those things, but it is also crucial to get away um, sometimes because even Jesus did that. Several times you're reading scripture where he, you know, slept, slipped away from them, you know, once he was there and then he just kind of, you know, he didn't disappear, but he just kind of got away from the crowd and got time along with his father because we need that as well because you know, I'm sure a lot of things, because Jesus came in the flesh, and I'm sure a lot of things that he was going through took its toll on him, because although he was fully God, he was yet still fully man as well, and so he needed to get away uh, several times to get strengthened by the Lord. I mean, he, that was his source of strength. God, his heavenly father, was his source of strength, and that's what should be our source of strength. I mean, we should be running on empty. We should be on E when we have not, especially believers, not uh, not unbelievers. Uh, I'm hoping to reach unbelievers, but unbelievers cannot comprehend or understand what I am speaking about right now. But my believers in the faith understand that when we're not spending time with God, we we should be on E. Or even the things that we're doing kind of changes versus the time when we are spent with God. So we need we need it. We need as a believer in Christ, you need to be praying to God and you need you need God. Period. You know, we can't make it on our own. We know that. So uh it's good to get away and pray, but when you can't get away, don't allow that to be something that stops you from praying so you shouldn't be like oh i can't get away right now i got you know no you can still pray and that's why when the word says pray continually common sense here lets us know we're just not praying you know get up in the morning brushing your teeth praying you know that's not necessarily that's not what that's saying but that's just making it a lifestyle making getting your heart in the posture to pray, to be in prayer with God, which is just basically communicating, communicate with the father, talk to him, talk to him and talk to him. You know, he, he knows us better than anyone else. So we don't have to come with elegant words or, you know, if you have a stutter speech impediment or whatever, God still wants to hear from us. And now a lot of people may not want to hear you talk, and this is what I love about it. You know, I know I get on a lot of people's nerves because I'll be talking a lot, especially about the Lord, you know. But thank God I can use that energy and direct it to talking to God because he never gets tired of hearing me. He created me. He knows everything about me. And he still loves me unconditionally. I mean, who wouldn't want to talk to someone like that? I mean, really, just think about it. For any of you that love to talk and you find it hard for people to want to talk to you, talk to God. He'd always want to hear from you. He wants to always, you know, hear from us, his children, the ones he created, the one he created for fellowship with him. So, yeah, um... Just want to make it a daily habit 
to communicate with the Lord. And whether you, you know, go into your secret closet or whether you're just in your car, whether you're cooking, just open up and talk to him. He already knows what you're going through, but he wants us to need him and come to him because he so much wants to help us with whatever it is that we are dealing with. That's the other thing. He so much wants to help us. So whatever it is you're dealing with, why would you hold on to it and forfeit some peace that you could have by just even giving that to the Lord, just giving it, just releasing it and giving it to him already takes it off of you. And knowing that you gave it to the one that is in the best hands. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I, you know, I know God be like, when are you people going to get it? You know, I'm here for you. I love you. Just get, just come to me. I got, I got you. But yet, so many times, you know, we just venture out on our own and try to do things, you know, our way, carry burdens we not meant to bear, carry alone anyway. We are, we're going to carry some burdens because that's what, you know, begins to grow us and mature us. But we don't do it alone. We do it with the Lord with us. Um, anyway, what am I? Oh, 21 minutes. I can't believe I up to 21 minutes. I've been yakking for 21 minutes. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this because I wasn't in planning for it to be this long. But at least I'm finished. And so thank you for tuning in to my video and peace out.